Okay, there is a, a question regarding um, uh, this, this question regarding the Born-Oppenheimer approximation in uh, QM calculation. How can we compute the nuclear contribution for energy refinement? Usually, in Gaussian software, we perform a calculation to obtain the thermal corrections. Okay, here I it's not clear to me the question because uh, could be uh, at least I have in mind two different things, and so my, I'll try to. Uh, clarify a bit um, what I have in mind uh, in this moment. If you talk about uh, here, you talk you talk about thermal corrections in the sense uh, uh, like the corrections uh, to the Gibbs free energy, if I remember well, as I are called, or the uh, correction to the enthalpy that uh, are usually obtained from Gaussian with the thermochemistry calculation. Uh, kind of calculations, uh, then uh, I suppose, then I suppose I know that uh, you can get the same kind of uh, quantities also with CP2K using doing the standard vibrational uh, uh, vibrational analysis calculation. Uh, if probably you have to introduce the thermochemistry keywords, if I remember well, but maybe here Dimitri knows better than me. Um, however, I want to point out that uh, uh, I want to point out that this kind of approach uh, that uh, uh, I was referring to, uh, the thermochemistry approach, uh, is uh, valid for molecule in, in molecules in gas phase. Uh, so you do single point calculation, uh, and uh, in addition, you have to um, the say suppose uh, make the approximation that uh, all the particles are not interacting. So you are uh, uh, your gas uh, your uh, system is uh, an ideal gas, and uh, uh, far more uh, far farthest you are from this approximation, and less accurate will be your uh, results. Uh, quite often, if you have a code uh, that allows you to do uh, uh, molecular, ab initial molecular dynamics, you can uh, instead adopt a different approach, of course, computational more expensive uh, because we have to do a molecular dynamics. Uh, uh, is the typical approach uh, that uh, user of CP2K, CPMD, quantum espresso, uh, users, etc., usually adopt, which is uh, not to do single point calculation plus the uh, let us say assumption of the ideal gas, but uh, sampling directly a statistical ensemble via a ab initio simulation. Uh, and um, yes, I would say this is the just a uh, thing that I had in mind. Uh, however, in the first part of the question is regarding the Born-Open approximation in quantum mechanics, how can we compute the nuclear contribution for energy refinement? Okay, uh, from the first part, I started to have in mind another kind of uh, 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 topic argument here, in the sense uh, with the Born-Open approximation, uh, let us say you and in general with ab initio molecular dynamics uh, schemes, you decide to treat uh, the nuclei or the core uh, electrons in uh, the core, uh, uh, the core uh, uh, part of your atom, uh, not only um, uh, just as a, uh, let's say, classical object which uh, um, are described by Newtonian-like uh, equations can be go can can be can go uh, can we go beyond this uh, approximation? Uh, the answer is that in general yes. Uh, this means that we should start treating quantum mechanically also the nuclei. These are uh, in general are called the nuclear quantum effects. Uh, uh, is a topic, uh, uh, let's say, not so popular because the nuclear quantum effects are relevant in very specific uh, um, area or context in chemistry, not in general, in general are totally negligible. 
but in principle, this is possible. Uh, one approach that I have in mind is called uh, uh, initial path integral molecular dynamics. I'm not sure that is implemented in CP2K. For sure, I know that was implemented in, CP, in CPMD. Uh, but of course, uh, this is only just a keyword to give you to you in case someone, someone in the future will be interested to these nuclear quantum effects. And, and uh, I, I was, uh, uh, in my mind, came, came out these things just reading uh, the first part of that question. Um, then so with regards to, uh, thank you Miriano. just looking yeah, at the chat. i have a, i saw also another question that maybe can be interesting can we generate meta ion parameters from the qmm setup to then only using mm uh first of all in principle yes first of all i would remind the the uh, let us say the observation that dimitri did this this morning regarding the fact that when you parameterize you want to parameterize uh, some uh, object some ligand some residue because you do not have parameter uh, with the aim to do maybe a very long classical molecular dynamics uh, ideally if possible you should always uh, uh, look at how the other parameter of your forces that you are going to use were parameterized, in particular if they were parameterized through high-level uh, quantum chemistry calculations, and uh, follow as much as possible the same uh, approaches of that uh, uh, the same approach approach uh, that uh, the developer of that force will use. This because uh, you would like that your new force field, no, no, no parameter, let us say, is totally compatible with the rest of parameters that are in your force field and that you will use in the simulation, in that specific simulation. It is true that sometimes this is not possible, uh, or at least could be uh, is a question, questionable. And uh, in particular, for example, with metals, uh, and so in those cases, uh, of course, it is possible to use, uh, uh, for example, CP2K uh, to, uh, let us say, uh, create and uh, obtain ad hoc uh, parameters. Uh, the keyword here is uh, force matching. Um, you should find a section regarding force matching uh, in, uh, in the city's way manual, let us say, uh, to see some details. Uh, what I can say here, um, of course, uh, one thing that you have always in mind is that uh, when you get a parameter, uh, a parameter or some parameter of the force in from this in this way, this parameter probably will be will work very well uh, uh, for your classical molecular drama simulation if you obtain them from a QMMM simulation coming from simulation from with the CP2K for example however these parameter are absolutely more very probable not transferable in the sense that these parameter are very suitable for that specific system from which you have used uh, to got them, but cannot be transferred for other system either even uh, with a rather similar, uh, uh, let us say, chemical environment, uh, for example, around the, uh, the metal ion, or, or at least you could not uh, be confident that it could use uh, uh, easily, let us say, or uh, successfully with uh, another system or even very similar. Uh, this was the question about which question you are about <laughs> and was answering. Uh, <laughs> what was so there is a uh, I answer for the moment the third one. Okay. okay. Then uh, uh, first one. Uh, so uh, about uh, the extraction vibrational frequency calculation. No, now it is not possible with the interface. Uh, unfortunately, because chromons have no such functionality and vibrational frequency calculation also. Vibrational frequency calculation with QMMM is kind of 
quite a questionable thing because the system is too big. Uh, yeah, I know that there is some uh, kind of approaches to do that, but I personally never trusted. Uh, it's much better. And if you look into the, our webinar series about the best practice in QMMM, uh, you will see that most of the people now, instead of doing this uh, transition state structure, they are more moving towards the free energy profile of your reaction using QMMM molecular dynamics. So uh, kinetics is much better reproduced with, uh, with dynamics, so to say. So it is always better to do umbrella sampling, for example, because umbrella sampling will give you the same result as, uh, will give you better results than your transition state structure because your transition state structure is very dependent on the your starting configuration. Uh, MD is usually not so dependent. Um, uh, so what is the best way to refine energy with high theoretical level in order to obtain more accurate rejection activation deep free energies? Uh, I, uh, here I can forward you to our PyXL YouTube channel, uh, to our best practice webinar series in the QMM, uh, which I have a link in that in my document, uh, in the presentation of the last slide. Uh, here there was uh, several examples what you should do and how you can do that. For example, how you need to check uh, the, uh, the size of your QM system, for example, is uh, your final results will pretty much depend on, on, on how big is your QM system and how you can check that. So this is a very long uh, answer by itself. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, another question is, so looking at, do you have something else to add here? Dimitri, I was going to say, well, uh, meanwhile, the chat you were having, is there any of the questions that you want to uh, say anything else about? I know you responded to a few different ones. Um, uh, yes, there was a question about link atoms which appeared in the phytocom topology. I, I, if you look into that, but I, I think it is uh, old one. You, they just sent it out there doing nothing. Uh, yeah, I, I just forgot to throw them out. <laughs> uh, link atoms are now in the interface generated automatically. Uh, Yes, uh, so, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, so there was also a question about how you should uh, really uh, calculate the spectra. So uh, really, if you want to calculate the spectra, what I suggest to do is to take a long dynamical trajectory that could sample the conformational space of your protein well. Uh, then you need to clusterize that trajectory somehow, take a significant snack, significant clusters from it take a snapshot from that clusters and start a uh, moment trajectory from that. So idea is that with classical MD, you can sample on a long time scale uh, with a very cheap method and find the global kind of uh, confirmations which protein could get. And with QMMM, you can access the properties you want on a shorter time scale. Uh, yeah, my short time scale. Yes, Arno also have a link to that best practice workshop and you do mm -hmm. playlist, uh, so which you can also look into. And there is probably the answer to your questions, how and what, how you can do this. Uh, yeah, uh, Emiliano, have you something to add on that? I, I saw no, simply uh, the last question in the, uh, in the document uh, is about, uh, could you comment on the usage of a semi-empirical methods with the Gromax CP2K interface? Are they as easy as the FT calculations? Uh, maybe, uh, I don't know. Uh, I, th I suppose that uh, in the interface uh, you can uh, do semi-empirical uh, or the FT uh, in the, in the, uh, without any problem. Am I right? Uh, yes, but uh, for now semi-empirical, you need to use your own CP2K input like you've done now this. Uh, mm -hmm. So you just need to set up them themselves, yeah. Uh, I How understand. to deal with the dangling bonds while going from QM to MM region? Thank you. Uh, so uh, now it is treated automatically. It will put link atoms automatically on the dangling bond. But uh, what you need to be sure is that you cut in the right bond. So, uh, for example, it is not a very good idea to cut uh, over the pi uh, system, yeah, because pi system have uh, very strong quantum interactions. And uh, if you cut, for example, your benzene ring into two halves, it will not work. So you need uh, the ideal situation where you need to cut, you need to cut over the uh, uh, sigma bond. And uh, more importantly, that sigma bond is the best one you can cut, should be between the two carbon atoms, in my uh, experience. So for example, if you cut between C alpha and C beta uh, bonds in the, of the protein chain, it will be okay. 
Uh, also, it is very good you, where you can cut, you can cut, uh, if you want to cut with the backbone of your amino acid, then it's better to cut over the uh, C, C alpha bonds. So CO and C alpha bonds. So these bonds need to be, you could cut pretty easily. Also, you should not cut on that, uh, in the protein, you should not cut over the peptide bond because peptide bond is also by system. Yeah, remember that. So, so the nitrogen, carbon, and oxygen forms uh, in your peptide system forms a pi system. So you should not cut that. Uh, cut on the C, uh, C, O, C, alpha, C, C, alpha bond. This is the best way how you can cut the protein backbone. And of course, never cut on the C, C bond in a ring or something like that. In the pi system, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in the pi system, you should not cut. The idea is that never cut the pi system <laughs> in a bio. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really bad idea. Uh, new big question, do CP2K has some GPU speed up? Uh, I think Arna could comment on that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I think we discussed it earlier today already. So CP2K certainly does uh, support GPU. It has CUDA based uh, offloading for NVIDIA GPUs natively within the application. Furthermore, um, it's via a library that it uses for uh, sparse uh, matrix multiplication, uh, which is used for some of the function calls within CP2K. It can also do some offloading to um, AMD GPUs, but that is of course a subset. So it's not very mature. It's also a subset of the uh, of the offloading that in principle is possible. So it definitely, definitely has CUDA uh, offloading for, G for GPUs and that is being developed quite actively at the moment. Uh, whether it actually gives you an advantage depends very much depends on your system a bit. I mean, CP2K has, got, broadly speaking, kind of two performance regimes, depending a little bit on on the size of your system and the size of your basis set. I mean, so CP2K is often quoted as sort of linear scaling code, and it can scale very well to very large systems. But that's when it uses slightly different approaches and algorithms for a sufficiently large number of QM atoms. Um, and that and that also makes more use of this sparse. Um, it's also about the homogeneity you know, the sparsity of your system. So that also makes more use of the of the sparse uh, matrix multiplication library that I mentioned, which therefore has more additional offloading. So it's it's difficult to say in any case whether you know, in advance whether it will benefit from GPU. But the question is, you should try it. Uh, for a lot of systems, traditionally, it's, it's been the case that there's not necessarily you know, for the case of having say. Um, nodes, compute nodes, where you've got maybe two Intel Xeon processors, maybe 24, 36 cores, with some generation of NVIDIA, like Pascal P100, or even maybe the Voltas. There's not necessarily that often an advantage of, of using the GPUs uh, additionally for offloading compared to use running purely on CPU. Um, but you, the question, the, the point is you have to you have to uh, try it. Now, in combined usage with Chromax plus CP2K, I think that already came up uh, earlier today. Um, this is, we're, we're looking at uh, characterizing the performance, providing guidance on this. Uh, so we will update the, so the best practice guide, which we've referred to today, which is the QMM best practice guide, as Holly said, for standalone CP2K. We will update that and expand it with guidance on using Gromax together with CP2K to run on GPUs. But as Dimitri mentioned earlier, you can use, it, we know Gromax works very well on GPUs, but the Gromax execution of, of, the, like, of the classical part is of course not the bottleneck limiting factor in the calculations here. Shall we look at some of the other ones? Uh, yeah, what is the best way uh, to refine energy is high rate for sync also, uh, answer to that. The best idea is to search, uh, look at the uh, webinar series on best practice in QMMM. There is a lot of talk. Uh, there was a lot of talks about this. Uh, accurate reaction and activation analysis, also with validation of your size of your QM system, for example. And higher level methods, I think, uh, who is Ulf Rude. He talked a lot about this high le higher level of theory and validation of visit of your QMMM models. Yes, certainly. Yeah, I think, I think I remember Ulf, Ulf was talking about uh, looking at systematically increasing the region size and number of QM and, mm -hmm. and having gu guidelines. So his webinar talks about guidelines, rules of thumb for how far away from the active site and how to, you know the effect of inclusion of more and more. Um, I think Adrian Mulholland's talk also talked about different levels of, of theory and it really did it compare. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, uh, so looking. At how two small molecules react with one another through QMM. Uh, I did not got quite a question. 
Uh, what do you mean? Uh, if you mean reactive molecules, reactive molecules should react with QM. Yeah, because in, in MM you don't have any uh, bond breaking typically. So, uh, yeah, I would suggest to clarify the question. <laughs> uh, yes, you can look into small molecules reacting with one another using, for example, the same umbrella sampling technique. No problem. Yeah. Uh, critical perspectives on dealing with non-parameterized ligand 25 residues can trust on the chamber. Uh, I think it's general, more general question about the uh, molecular mechanics rather than QM. But what I can uh, add here is that if you will follow the anti-chamber uh, protocol, uh, what it uses to parameterize your amber uh, 14 or amber 03 force field, then yeah, you could trust. <laughs> I mean, the all the whole amber uh, force field is built upon that the same approximation. So, if you do it uh, quite uh, accurately, then yes, at least it will be not uh, not less. Uh, you do not produce much error in comparison to the to the other uh, residues than the non-standard ligands. Uh, so what are some pitfalls when setting up uh, what we could make around decisions? There is a whole uh, discussion about the wrong decisions again in the uh, uh, best practice workshop. So if you're really interested in that, follow, please follow that. I think in the final uh, panel discussion, there was talked a lot about the wrong decisions. And some of the persons have also talked about their uh, failures uh so even the high i mean it's nothing wrong to be wrong <laughs> yeah so uh, a lot of scientists even a high level scientists why good that workshops that they also show uh, where they are failed and sometimes they fail really critically and they need to scratch the years of job years of computations uh, or redo them and there is nothing wrong it's just science that's how science works there is no success without uh, how it's called is our downfall <laughs> first. <laughs> I would say that one, one of the one of the take home messages from that best practice mm -hmm. workshop, uh, part of the reason we organized it was that it's it's I mean it's great that we have the interface with Chromax to CP2K. Um, it's just the only thing to be aware of if you're using this is just that it don't not to treat it really like a black box to be aware as you are through through this course of the relative benefits or, or pros and cons of the different functionals what is included in different levels of theory and not not to just blindly use uh, a functional because well it's it's the default and you know it's probably fine um it might be but uh, you know try to look at uh, looking at um, validating this somehow and the, the best practice workshop gives some examples. Um, I think Maria Canova's webinar talks about one example of you know how you can validate you know, things. So this is something to be just just something to be aware of. And then that's about the QMM simulation approach as a whole or modeling approach rather than using CP2K, for example. I mean that's that's just true whatever software you use. Yeah, it's always will be true. Uh, for any software you use, you always need to validate what you are doing. Also in classical molecular dynamic situation, you also need to do a sanity checks. Uh, if you, for example, see that uh, your system starts deviating a lot from the crystal structure, it may be already a warning that you are doing something wrong, uh, usually, but yeah. Additional tutorials practicing QMM simulations with different scenarios using proteins after the course. Can you generate metal ion primers for QMM setup than only using only using mm okay so it's again about the parameter generation for parameter generation it's better to follow the uh force field protocol uh and generate how usually they are generated using the uh using the quantum mechanics indeed in the force field, but you need to follow the protocol pretty closely uh yeah for antechamber or for charm gui i guess also that's the second one who can produce you so uh, 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 yes so that's the idea uh, can you extract the parameters on QMMM typically you can extract MM parameters from QMMM but it's not the best idea to do that because uh, usually your force field is parameterized with a different level of theory okay uh, can you go a bit further uh, how can we use Chromax CP2K to calculate reaction profile uh, mainly it's a abstraction. So there is now uh, a one way which I showed to you is umbrella sampling. 
uh, you can do umbrella sampling and you can uh, perform umbrella sampling. And this kind of a standard approach which most of the people is using right now in real life, uh, in, real, uh, in real situations, because it's the most convenient way. Uh, for now, we're also looking at some additional ways how you can do this. For example, if you look into the biopsy, there is now a method called accelerated weighted histogram uh, free energy uh, method, uh, which supposed to be a bit better than overall sampling in terms of it should converge faster. But uh, for now, it is still under the consideration. Uh, if there will be such things, I think yeah, we will uh, make an examples of how you can use that instead of umbrella sampling. It's one of the targets for us now. Okay, uh, there is uh, uh, some question in the chat also. So uh, about the DFTB. Uh, so yes, DFTB, if you want to do DFTB with the interface, technically CP2K have DFTB capabilities and you can do that, but it's on your own risk because CP2K, CP2K implementation of DFTB is not quite well in my opinion, it's not very stable. Uh, and many people complain about that. So for now, I, I would suggest you still to use uh, old implementation of Thomas Kubar uh, with a 2018 Gromax, I guess, and old interface. But we are looking into uh, into involving also Thomas maybe somehow and, and make the uh, DFTB interface with a newer version of Gromax. It's one of our next targets probably. Uh, so about the machine learning approaches so uh the andrew asking uh, so uh, the, they're playing now with uh, SEA any force field i guess that machine learned force field and they they want uh, how how it can be combined also with that uh, uh with that uh, with the uh, gromax so yes indeed uh, we are not done only the interface but also our colleagues from tth they've done uh, a whole uh, IP, so application programming interface, how you can implement your own uh, force fields, uh, any external forces and so on uh, by yourself. Yeah, if you are skilled enough in the C++ programming. And uh, one of the examples how this interface works is our cp interface. It also works through that API. There is also, I think, density fitting approach. It works through that API uh, now in Gromax. So yeah, there is a whole machinery uh, with which, for, for using which you can uh, implement your own uh, force providers. So you can provide any external force and Gromox will integrate them into the simulation. Uh, so yeah, it looks very promising. I also promised at some point to do this, uh, to maybe implement this as here yeah, any force field into the Gromox using this and the modules, but we'll see. Uh, yeah, so I think it's worth to try at least. Uh, exception to the reaction profile. Question: uh, uh, If if one needs to break a bond, the atom transfer from ligand to protein, can that just be done with a pull command in umbrella sampling, or there is another way? Uh, the best idea how you can do this reaction profile. How I suggest you to do that reaction profile in general uh, with umbrella sampling. So first you do uh, pooling simulation where you pull uh, your system from state A to state B using this pooling, uh, using this uh, uh, pooling with non-zero velocity. So you basically put this uh, uh, pooling velocity to some value yeah, and pull the system from one state to another. It will create you some uh, structures along the pathway. Then you pick up that structures evenly spaced along your reaction coordinate and start umbrella simulations with that with a zero velocity. That's usually how it is done now. Uh, in the umbrella simulations. So it, it needs to be done through the pooling code. Yes, Matthew, this answer to your question. The way how you do this in Gromax is pool. It's pool, pool, pool code, how it's called, pooling code. Uh, so there is, uh, okay, so for meta lines, so it continues also for meta lines. Uh, yeah, I think the Andrew, Gift a really good uh, paper on parameterization of meta lines. Uh, also, do not forget that the meta lines, uh, probably if you want to parameterize them well, you need also to parameterize them in complex with uh, the amino acids to which they are bound towards. Yeah, so you need to make uh, one huge residue which will contain meta lion and uh, amino acids which are connected to it. 
Uh, yeah, so this is how you should do that in reality. Yes. Okay. Uh, so I think we covered all the questions. So which I saw in the chat and in the file. Yes. Okay. Ah, also, also about the metal ions, I I would suggest you really uh, once you're doing the metal ions with CP2K, for example. Please be very careful with the basis that you are using and with a uh, cutoff for the plane weights you are using. Uh, so metal ions is one of the things which kind of uh, not so easy to converge because they have usually a very high speed. It could have, for example, iron ions, they could have a high spin states, uh, higher spin states than the singlet, and this will really uh, uh, slows down just slows down simulations and lead to some numerical instabilities in quantum mechanics. So always check uh, for if you have a metal lines in your system, always check convergence uh, of uh, cutoff and conver and uh, take a big uh, basis set. Yeah, that's what I suggest you to do. Okay, well I can I can just wrap up then uh, if there are no more questions. Again, I just we've talked about it a couple of times already. Dimitri mentioned it. We've, we've raised it again and again because uh, this this hopefully will be useful. So if you want to continue, uh, you know, to adding on another uh, rest of your day or tomorrow to to sort of extend, um, you can you can just basically attend this workshop retrospectively uh, by by looking at the uh, listening to the webinars and the, the panel discussion. So here, here um, some of these uh, external speakers, these experts, uh, together with uh, Gerard Groenhoff, uh, who's also in BioXL, try to tackle some of these real challenges surrounding the use uh, of QMM for modeling simulation much more generally, so not specific to, to CP2K. Uh, so a lot of the aspects might might uh, might be useful there to, to look at how people uh, actually tackle these, these issues and uh, what things can go wrong, what to look out for. So uh, when it comes to using um, Chromex with CP2K or CP2K standalone. We have at BioXL has a support form, ask.bioxl.eu. Um, there is a section on the form for QMMM. Uh, so actually in the in the schedule on the course materials page, in the wrap-up section that I've put in uh, just recently, there's a whole list of, of links and there's a link to the form there as well. Um, so finally I just wanted to say um, well, let me let me quickly let me quickly just uh, share the the page that I'm talking about uh, just to point out some of the links there. Um, so yeah, so we have here the uh, slides. Okay, uh, the, the feedback server links there. Then there's a link to the uh, to Dimitri's uh, modified version of Chromax with the interface integrated. And there's a lot of different branches, but the branch that's relevant for the version of Archer of Chromax used on Archer 2 during the course is the 2021.1 Plumet branch. Installation instructions are in install dev, uh, as Dimitri mentioned. There are links there to the um, QMM best practice guide uh, to the workshop. Um, there's a link to a paper there, which might be useful when it comes to considering functionals. It's, it's sort of a warning, a guide, and a warning to the to the D, the, the zoo of available DFT functionals. So that might be a, something to help you help you make some choices as well. Link to Ask by Excel form, and there's a link to various kinds of useful maybe scripts um, and further tutorials uh, developed uh, at least in part by us uh, that that might help you um, in future. Uh, so with that, I would like to thank. Uh, Dimitri and Emiliano for contributions, Holly for her session as well. And I'd like to all thank you all uh, very much for attending and uh, do get in touch on the forum if you have any other questions to follow up on. Other than that, um, yeah, I wish you a very good rest of your day. Yep, very good. Thank you. Whatever you have, yeah. <laughs>